7, 2001. He wasn't entirely at home in the United States. I called and uh, the person heard a, an accent and he said, what color are you? And I looked over to my mother, you know, this 1964, and I said, mother, what color am I, pink? He wasn't altogether at home in Mexico either. And I would be walking down the street, kids would call out to me, hey, gringo, go home. But he was American enough to sing in a Texas restaurant. Now he is Mexican enough to hold a cabinet position, fighting for Mexicans here in the United States. The United States says, don't come, don't come, don't come. But if you make it, here is a great reward. Tonight, the new frontier, the man in the middle. These Mexican laborers lay the stones, prep the restaurant food, and fix the roads of America's economic boom. The latest census shows there may be as many as 11 million undocumented Mexican workers in this country. More are coming every day, risking their lives to get here. 14 illegal immigrants were found dead after being abandoned by the men who had smuggled them across the U.S.-Mexican border. That is why Juan Hernandez travels from Mexico to the U.S. every week. He heads a new presidential office open specifically to represent Mexicans abroad. His first stop today was Arizona, where he went to the hospital to meet the survivors of the latest border tragedy. The visit got headline coverage in Mexico. Were they surprised when a cabinet minister showed up? Sure, sure. Yeah, especially at the hospital. <laughs> uh, but... Uh... Yes, I think the, these individuals, but the, we want them to know that they're not second-class citizens just because they have crossed a, a line, they've broken a, a law. Some people call them illegals, we call them undocumented. Let's offer Dr. Hernandez a warm welcome. And for the first time, Mexican government officials are very publicly calling Mexican migrants something else. Heroes, new pioneers, new VIPs. VIPs. These very important paisanos, individuals. Very important countrymen, says Hernandez to every group he meets within the United States. And indeed, they are sending home at least $10 billion a year to Mexico, the third largest money earner behind oil and tourism. They've been fueling the economy of the United States. They've been fueling the economy of, of Mexico. They are good people, they're working, they do have jobs. We're willing to put our money where, where our mouth is to help them and, and protect them. Are you talking Spanish or English? English. English? Oh, yes. yeah. So Hernandez zigs <laughs> and zags <laughs> across the United States meeting with migrants. He answers questions. <laughs> listens to complaints. <laughs> consoles grieving relatives whose family members died trying to make it to the American labor market. This is really important to us, he tells her, believe me. He takes down names and details and promises to follow up. Mexicans here have never seen anything like it. Juan Hernandez is the man Fox chose to carry out the policy. And if he sounds like an American, that's because he is an American, a Mexican-American, the first to serve in a Mexican cabinet, although now he's a citizen of both countries. You are a representative of the Mexican government, but you are an American. Uh, um, not, not that you were, I'm not saying you were picked for that reason, but... Here you are, the representative. Oh, I think I was picked for the reason. I don't, uh, you were picked. Sure, I think Vicente Fox has known me for five years, and and uh, on the contrary, we worked together because of my understanding of immigration, because my father was a, a migrant to 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 the United States. His mother is an American. When the family moved back to Mexico, Hernandez struggled to fit in. And I would be walking down the street, and a little bit like the country western song, uh, a boy named Sue. Uh, kids would call out to me, hey, gringo, go home. Because you were the blonde guy. I was the blonde kid, yeah. And so I'd have to go back and prove myself as, as being Mexican. Back in Texas, growing up Mexican-American in the 60s would prove difficult, too, when as a boy he phoned a local Fort Worth swimming pool. The person heard a, an accent, and he said, what color are you? And I'd never been asked that question. Uh, and I looked over to my mother, you know, this is 1964, and I said, mother, what color am I, pink? 
And, and she said, hang up, we're not going swimming there. La cucaracha, la cucaracha, ya no puede caminar. He eventually learned to swim in both cultures, playing Mexican ballads at Joe T. Garcia's, a famous Fort Worth restaurant, while he earned his Ph.D. in English literature. He produced four albums of the Mexican classics and some of his own music. He got a teaching job at the University of Texas, founded a Mexican-American institute, and invited this up-and-coming Mexican governor for a visit. He's been with Fox ever since. Some people have said, well, we don't think that it's right that he is able to, to somehow uh, participate in, in both countries. Uh, what I say is that is the reality of U.S.-Mexico relationships. And there are now over 20 million people that have one foot in Mexico and one foot in, in the United States, according to new census. If they're going to attack me, they're going to have to attack 20 million people. Juan Hernandez uses his dual identity whenever he can. <laughs> and the doors are wide open. Good. Good to see you. Just great. Just great. The business community, law enforcement, U.S. politicians. I need to run back to the legislature, okay? Yes, thank you. I would say hello to the governor for me, okay? Me if you need are welcoming him wherever he goes in ways that even surprises him. Could you have done this five years ago? No. No, no, not at all. Uh, the clouds have opened up and all of a sudden the conditions are, are perfect. But also we have to work incredibly hard to, to make something of it.